guys? We're in the garage. It is too hot to be working outside uh, today. This is actually part two of uh, the Nintendo Restore Cab, and we're going to get into the nitty gritty today of actually assembling uh, the pieces. In the last video, we showed how to cut out a replacement panel, how to cut out to make it exactly straight, measuring from the top down, and getting yourself a nice straight edge, which is imperative to make this kind of uh, work work, I guess you would say. Um, so today we're going to get into actually assembling it, putting the cabinet back together, strengthening it, making it like one solid piece, and then if we got time we'll get into doing the Bondo work and uh, hopefully maybe some primer. Uh, that'll probably be the next video, but we'll at least get this part done of the mechanics of assembly. Now uh, Mike, Mike Martin, I think, uh, I believe it was, called me out uh, saying half inch birch, how am I going to get that to match up to 9 sixteenths? And that is the problem when you're working on a, a Nintendo cabinet, is Nintendo, when they're made, it's 9 sixteenths uh, plywood, um, and it's darn near impossible to find. So I thought about it and thought about it and came up with a pretty unique solution, which I think will work for everybody, and it's, it's pretty amazing. So here's the deal. Here's the half-inch plywood right here. Um, this is the leftover piece from what we cut out. Now, when you put it up against it, if I get down low, you can see that there's about a, a sixteenth of an inch difference um, all the way across the, the thing because this is half inch, this is nine sixteenths. And like I said, it's very difficult to, uh, to um, get nine sixteenths plywood here. Now this right here, you know, I could fade it with Bondo all the way down, but then you run the risk of it cracking or, uh, you know, getting chipped or something like that. Um, so that, that's a pretty, you know, you could do it with Bondo, but you would really have to feather it from like here to here and bring it gradually over time to make up the difference where you wouldn't see this giant line come all the way down it. So I, the option that I came up with is pretty unique. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen anybody do it. I just thought about it and I remembered my days of building models and I remembered they make 16th of an inch veneer uh, wood that you use in model building. So what I did is I went and got, went to Hobby Lobby and they sell this stuff. This isn't balsa wood, this is called bass wood. And it's harder, it's it's what they use to make like ribs in uh, wings for airplanes, model airplanes and different projects like that. But you can get it in a 16th, they actually make it in a 32nd as well. And uh, I, I figured it'd be a pretty cheap, unique uh, solution to our problem. Now this this stick right here, it's like a $1.40 and then you can get a full bigger sheet. This is like a six inch uh, sheet that you can get for, uh, I believe it was like $6, but I used the 40% off coupon. So I got it for like four bucks. So I was able to do the whole cabinet for basically around $7. And what I did is around the outside edges where it meets the cab, I went ahead and glued and clamped all the way around the edges to make up the extra 16th. Now here, this part here is gonna actually show when we flip it over, it will become this underside edge right there. So you want that to match up perfectly so the T-molding and everything looks correct. So now, when we line this up, after applying that, as you can see, we have a perfectly smooth transition. I mean, it might be off by like a 64th of an inch, but that all can be just taken down with sanding. So I, I think that's a unique solution to deal with the 916th uh, Nintendo problem. And as you can see from the front right here, once we pan around, it matches up pretty perfect right there. So all we'll have to do at that point is cut the new T-molding uh, down once we join it together and then bondo the seam. And since we did such a nice straight cut, as you can see, bondo is going to be pretty easy straight across. It's just going to be that little, little crack and then feathering it through. So the next step is going to be to go ahead and biscuit join this piece of wood to the cabinet and uh, what I've, I've laid out here, these are number 10 biscuits um, number 10 Ryobi, uh, you can get any one, just they all follow the same different thing. I use number 10 on plywood and what we'll do is we'll use the biscuit joiner right here and we will cut a uh, groove with the, with the tool that the biscuit will fit halfway in this one and halfway in this new piece that we got and um, it makes it super strong because these biscuits are like wafers and when they get wet with the glue, they actually expand in the joint once they're in there. And I don't like to leave it up to chance, so we will also be using the awesome uh, Craig jig. We're gonna go ahead and put probably three or four 
um, Craig jig screws down inside the cabinet into the new piece to pull it up in. And the great thing about that is you really don't have to clamp it at that point. The Craig jig uh, screws really work like a clamp and I'll probably do like a screw here, screw here, screw here, and screw here in between in between the biscuits to pull it tight and, and keep that seam as tight as possible. So we'll get into that next. I just want to give you an overview of what's going on, how we created the 916 plywood, because that's base, essentially what you did is just put one more layer of plywood on there. And uh, I think that's going to work out really awesome. So um, let's get to uh, setting up the biscuits. Okay, your first step when you're going to do biscuit joints, um, what we got to do is go ahead and set lines. So you got to make sure that you got this part perfectly squared to the front and the back where you're going to want it. And then go ahead and get yourself a triangle. And there's no real, you don't have to measure this out. You just need a line to go across both boards. So I normally start in the middle. Helps if you got some lead there. The middle. And then the middle of that. And then the middle of this one. And then the end of this one. Now you gotta be careful up front because you gotta remember you got about an inch of relief in the front here. So you wanna make sure you're back from that. So I'm actually gonna come back a little bit from that one and make sure we got enough room. And then we'll do one last one here. So I'm gonna put five biscuits across the back or across the bottom. All right, so that is to line up where you're gonna make your cuts for the biscuit joiner, because uh, your biscuit essentially is gonna be in the wood in between spanning the two pieces of wood. So when you cut with the biscuit joiner, you gotta be able to cut on the same line in all spots. And that's what we'll show next. All right, we got a biscuit joiner. Uh, this is a porter cable. You can use any biscuit joiner uh, for this type of work. And uh, the most important thing is you gotta have it set to whatever biscuit number you are. We're using tens, like I said earlier, and that's just setting the dial. And that uh, controls the depth at which the blade will actually come out. So uh, there's that, and then the only other setting you have is half inch is what we're setting it for. Even though it's 9 16 we're setting it for half inch um, just to be right in the exact middle of the actual thing to make the cut. So what we'll do is we'll go down where we had our marks and on the front, on top right there, you can see there's a line. That's the absolute center of where the cutting blade comes out. So it's as simple as lining up onto your line, getting it set, and then you pull the trigger and push in. And we'll go right down the line. Next one. Next one. And the last one. All right, and if you look around here, you'll see the blade went in just enough for the biscuit to fit comfortably. So in the next part, we're gonna go ahead and do the brand new piece that we just cut, and we're gonna cut it on the same exact line so these match up perfectly. So that's coming up. Okay, this is the piece that we made. Uh, like I said, we drew all our lines. That's to show where these biscuits are gonna go. Um, so what we'll do is we'll take this piece and we'll flip it around just so we get access to it. And we're gonna do the same exact thing. Line up the center line with the lines that we drew and then it will match up perfectly to what we've already done. So we'll go ahead and cut these now. Remember that was our mess up line. We're gonna go in a little further. All right, and there you have it. There's the grooves. Now you're gonna say, hey, it looks like it's cut off center. It really isn't, because you gotta remember this is 9 16 and this is only half inch. So the most important is to make the top of this match the top of that, because we didn't add any wood here. We added it here, so it looks like the same thickness, but here it looks offset, um, which is gonna be fine, because when we go ahead and put the biscuits in now, 
where they'll just fit in the groove. And as you can see, the way it cuts, you do have some wiggle room. It's not dead on center. You just want to make sure that you're very close to those lines. So we'll put three of them in just to see. And we'll turn this around. And that will fit. Boom. And like I said, there is some wiggle room. You can get it. So once that's in tight, it will be good to go. We'll do the Craig jig. Uh, in the next part, we'll go ahead and drill some Craig holes down through here to pull this in flat and it will pull it up tight. Also, when we put the glue on these, these biscuits will swell up in that joint and it will be rock solid like one piece. So that's what we're going to do next. Go ahead and drill some holes for the Craig jig and we'll get this attached and glued. All right, we are here. We had to go ahead and I actually had to take out the coin box, the wooden coin box that's there. No big deal. It's four screws. Just pull it out. Um, but I needed to do that to be able to get in to put the uh, the Craig jig, jig holes up in between our biscuits on this end. I went ahead and drilled them out all the way down. I left this last one here for you guys to be able to see. Real easy setup. You just set up that jig uh, right to the edge of your wood. I used a really cheap, like $30 uh, one that I got from Lowe's, and they want you to buy that expensive clamp to hold it down. You don't really need it. I just use one of the uh, the quick grip, um, you know, things, and it holds it good enough uh, to be able to drill the holes. So what I'll go ahead and do is get set up inside the cabinet, drill out the last one, and we'll show you how that's done. We're down in the cabinet now. As you can see, I drilled all the pocket holes uh, all the way down, so you can see where they're going to grip in between where the uh, biscuit joints are and then we got this last one here we're gonna go ahead and drill out now real easy you got the uh, the collar set to the depth you gotta change it to whatever depth your wood is this is half inch so that's what I got it set for and we'll get it set up in the collar there and it's simple we just ride the sleeve all the way down keep going until you hit the collar pull it out and then we'll unclamp it. And there you go. Nice pocket hole at the correct angle. And this will really, you know, I started using this on my restores. Uh, biscuits are fine, but then you gotta have a clamp that can go all the way from the bottom of the cabinet all the way to the top. With this, once you put these screws in there, they're so strong that you don't even need a clamp. It just pulls it so tight. So we'll go up top, we'll start gluing everything, getting everything prepped, and then we'll put it all together. All right, it's time to put this thing together. Uh, first thing you want to do is go ahead and get some glue. Um, I'm using Type Bond. You can use Elmer's. You can do whatever wood glue you got. Uh, go ahead and get yourself some. Put a lot in the actual hole itself for the biscuit and get yourself a good bead of it going all the way down. Like I said, you can wipe it off, so I mean, don't be afraid to go heavy duty on it. And you don't want to do it on the front edge because obviously that's going to be expanded but you want to do it around the cabinet. Get it all on this cleat here. And like I said, don't be afraid to put too much. If it squeezes out, you can wipe it off. So we're gonna clamp this down there. And then we'll go ahead and put the biscuits in. Whoop, dropped it. Go ahead and get the biscuits seated in there. And as I said, these don't have to be perfect. You got a little bit of wiggle room that they build in there. And the cool thing about these, like I was telling you, is that these actually expand once they're in there. They're kind of like a wafer material, if you can see how the glue can go all through it. And it expands once it gets into the joint. So we got that all glued up. We got the cabinet glued up. And let's go ahead and squirt some glue into these holes. Put a little bit on the outside. Like I said, you know, it's going to get a little messy, but you want to rather have a strong cab, so all the stuff cleans up. We're going to go ahead and take it and put it in, line up our biscuits. There we go. And the most important thing is you want this front edge to be square and solid. Um, that's the most important thing, is to make sure that that is lined up and solid. So, 
And we got that flat. And once that's done, what I like to do is before I screw it, I'll clamp this down so this matches up. And then we can go ahead and screw the two pieces together. We got the screws pulled in. Uh, I didn't film that part because I figured you guys just understood. It's just screws clamping it together. Uh, biscuits are joined. This is all joined. Uh, you still got a little edge I can feel for a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and knock that down real quick. Um, you're never going to get it perfect. I mean, cabinets are old. They're warped. You know, the easiest way is to just fan it out with some sandpaper now. We'll bring it down a bit and then uh, we'll do the nice skim coat over it real light and easy. Um, no big thick. Just really probably like a 30 second of a skim coat it will fill that gap and we'll have brand new. So we'll go ahead and sand it real quick. And the whole key to this is to just get it where you don't feel the ridge anymore. And you can see by me being able to go back and forth with the sander, there's not really much of a ridge as is. moving my hand it's fairly smooth all the way across I'll probably sand it a little bit more to feather it uh, just make it almost just indistinguishable between the two I mean it's 90% there I'm um, not gonna bore you guys with sanding for an hour but that's it man this whole side was all chewed up uh, I got it from Jen Hall I forgot she told me the story about this one it looked like it got drugged by a truck it was all rotted out so she had pre-cut the areas out smartly and uh, she was going to replace smaller sections. I decided to just go ahead and take out a bigger section. Um, I thought it'd be a little bit easier to take care of. But we, we did it. We cut this old out. We got the new piece in, uh, shaped it. We built it up to 916 so it matches perfectly with the front edge. And we did the biscuit joints and, uh, you know, Craig jigged it. And it is, I mean, it's part of this cabinet now. There's no moving it. So uh, that's about it for now. We're going to go ahead and uh, stop for today. This is part two. We got part three coming up. I'll show you how to bondo and then we'll get into the process that I do to restore Nintendo cabs uh, paint, which is really hard. It's like an enamel looking stuff. So we'll go through that next time.